What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here at Tricky Gym at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Japan's V Max Rising set, which includes powerful new Pokemon V and V Max, including the starters from the Sword and Shield generation. This is going to be part of our upcoming Rebel Clash set due out May 1st. But before we get started, I want to take you all over to FullGripGames.com. If you're looking for a little bit of extra cash in your pocket, it's never been a better time to sell your cards to Full Grip Games. If you head on over to our website, you can click on the Buy List tab up here in the top left corner, and it'll take you to our Buy List page where I've got a video explaining how to submit a buy list with us if you've never done it before, but it's pretty simple. You just fill out the buy list with the cards that you wanna to sell to us and submit it. We approve your buy list, you send us the cards, and we send you the cash. Shopping with Full Grip Games directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. So thank you all so much to everybody who's continued to support Full Grip Games. Let's get on with the video. First Pokemon that we're going to talk about is Rillaboom V. Rillaboom V has 220 hit points and evolves into Rillaboom V Max, who we're going to talk about in just a moment. It's got two pretty good attacks, though. Forest Feast allows you to search your deck for up to two basic grass Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Then you shuffle your deck, and Wood Hammer does 220 damage for three grass and a colorless, and this Pokemon also does 30 damage to itself. Notably, Wood Hammer is a little bit short of a one-hit KO on Zacian V, since Zacian V does resist grass by 30 damage, but 220 damage is still a respectable amount of damage to pump out for this basic grass Pokemon. Its first attack is what really impresses me though. Forest Feast gets you two grass Pokemon out of the deck and places them straight to the bench instead of to the hand. And I really like that because you can use this attack on the first turn of the game to help set up Grookies. And Grookies can evolve into the Rillaboom from Sword and Shield, which is gonna be the primary way to accelerate energy onto your Rillaboom V and Rillaboom V Max. Rillaboom VMAX is supposed to be the saving grace of the Grass Box archetype that debuted in Sword and Shield. The Sword and Shield Rillaboom has that ability Voltage Beat, which accelerates two grass energy from the deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. Rillaboom VMAX takes very good advantage of that ability. It's got two attacks. The first one for one colorless, Scratch does 50 damage. Pretty good energy to damage output ratio for a one colorless energy attack. But Max Barrage is the attack that's got everybody talking for three grass and a colorless it deals 130 plus damage and you may discard up to three grass energy from this pokemon this attack does 50 more damage for each energy you discarded in this way so with voltage beat you can accelerate two grass energy per turn to your rillaboom v max and then of course you can attach one from hand as well meaning that it's pretty easy to get the four energy required onto max barrage and if you discard all three that you can for the attack, you can replenish those with one voltage B and an energy attachment from hand the following turn. So Max Barrage can deal the magic number, 280 damage if you discard three grass energy from it, knocking out the popular tag team Pokemon such as Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, Mewtwo, MU, Tag Team, GX, Reshiram and Charizard, GX, you name it, Rillaboom VMAX is probably knocking it out. And Rillaboom VMAX has a hefty 330 30 HP, making it a force to be reckoned with. Now, my question is, in the Grass Box deck, is Rillaboom VMAX going to be an auxiliary attacker alongside Rowlet and Alolan Executor Tag Team GX, who uses Super Growth typically to get that Rillaboom from Sword and Shield into play? Or are we going to see a more rare candy oriented version of this deck using that Rillaboom V to set up Grookies on the bench and then following it up with a rare candy Rillaboom into a huge max barrage attack? I'm anxious to see how players decide to build their grass box decks going forward. But if there's one thing for sure, I think it's going to include Rillaboom V Max. One of my favorite things about the upcoming set is that there are new gust effects to choose from, one of which is Appleton. Appleton is a really cool Pokemon out of Sword and Shield. Its ability, Delicious Scent, reads, once during your turn, you may flip a coin if heads choose one of your opponent's bench basic Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. Now, some of you may be rolling your eyes thinking, oh no, great, we've got another coin flip gust effect why would we need appleton if we already have pokemon catcher and we got boss's orders coming out in our upcoming rebel clash set as well well appleton makes a case for itself because delicious scent can be used every single turn so against a deck like a stall deck or something like that appleton's delicious scent ability can just be reused and it never runs out pokemon catchers eventually run out boss's orders eventually run out appleton's effect sticks as long as it is 
is in play. And there's no real great way to turn off its ability in standard format. So I think Appleton carves out a niche for itself as far as gust effects go because it stays on the board and that's pretty valuable. When combing through the set, I tried to handpick cards that I felt like were interesting or worth talking about. Nine Tails here has a really cool one energy attack. Hex does 30 damage plus 90 more if your opponent's active Pokemon has an ability. Conveniently enough, Zacian V, one of the most powerful Pokemon in standard format right now, has an ability and is weak to fire. Nine Tails is Hex, deals a one hit KO on Zacian V for just one energy. So I think it's worth talking about and it's got a beautiful artwork. So there's that as well. But some of you may say, oh no, what if it's wearing a metal frying pan? Fortunately enough, there is also tool removal in the form of tool scrapper coming out in our upcoming set as well. So Ninetales could carve out a little niche for itself as far as one energy attackers that can one hit KO Zacian. Of all the Sword and Shield Pokemon V starters, Cinder Ace V and Cinder Ace V Max arguably inherit the most powerful support in the form of Welder. So they're definitely worth talking about. Cinder Ace's ability, Field Runner, reads, if there is a stadium card in play, this Pokemon has no retreat. Fortunately for fire type Pokemon, there's almost always a stadium in play. We've got Giant Hearth and Heat Factory, both very powerful stadium cards, giving Cinderace free retreat and allowing it to easily pivot into the likes of Jirachi, which is fantastic for this card's consistency. Its attack, Crimson Legs, deals 140 damage for two fire and a colorless, which is a nice vanilla attack damage to energy cost ratio. And it's got 210 hit points. But Cinderace VMAX, is the real card we're going to be talking about. Cinderace VMAX is another huge Pokemon VMAX rocking 320 HP and two pretty good attacks. Its first attack for a fire and a colorless counter does 30 plus additional damage equal to the amount of damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon during your opponent's last turn. With 320 HP, it is going to be very difficult to knock out Cinderace VMAX, meaning that counter can deal some huge numbers when it takes hits. So you're going to be able to punish your opponent for not one hit KOing Cinderace VMAX, which is going to be a very difficult thing to do. Grand Fireball for two fire and a colorless deals 170 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned, so effectively 190 damage, which is pretty good damage output for this Pokemon. Pokemon. All in all, will Cinderace VMAX outclass the other fire mainstays in standard right now? It's got a lot of competition. There's Reshiram and Charizard, of course, Placephalon GX, Placephalon from Unbroken Bonds, Heatran GX. Ultimately, I don't think that Cinderace VMAX has the chops to be able to compete with these other welder targets in the format, but it is a nice evolution card for firebox decks to have at its disposal and could become relevant one day. Last of the Sword and Shield starters, Inteleon V has got two attacks. Snipe Shot does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Very good. We've seen this kind of attack see success before with the likes of Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX's linear attack. A nice little 40 damage snipe can easily KO Ditto Prism Star, which is a very popular Pokemon in our standard format right now, and also soften up big Pokemon V or Pokemon V Max, as well as Tag Team Pokemon GX. Aqua Report for two water and a colorless deals 130 damage and your opponent reveals their hand playing along with that kind of secret agent theme. Inteleon VMAX has 320 HP, similar to Cinderace VMAX, and two attacks. Inteleon V's Hydro Snipe deals 60 damage, and you may return an energy card from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. So that's a nice little disruptive attack if you were to be able to get an Inteleon VMAX into play turn two, going first against an Arceus Dalgopalkia deck and target down their Arceus Dalgopalkia, you could return the energy to their hand and disrupting energy attachments in this format is very good. My concern is that you would not be able to disrupt the Arceus Dalgopalkia before they are actually able to use Ultra Creation GX since Inteleon VMAX is an evolved Pokemon. That being said, it is a very useful little attack to have and for one energy, 60 damage and energy disruption is very strong. Its second attack, Grand Bullet for two water and a colorless deals 160 damage and 60 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. 
compared to another Pokemon with very similar attacks, the Dragapult V Max that we're going to be getting in our upcoming Rebel Clash set. I think that Dragapult just has a better attack cost and attack damage ratio, and the Dragapult deals five damage counters anywhere you want on the opponent's bench. This does 60 damage. It could be blocked by Mew from Unbroken Bonds. That being said, 60 damage tonight is enough to KO a lot of little guys on the bench. So if your opponent doesn't have a Mew from Unbroken Bonds in play, you can easily take some pointed knockouts on the opponent's bench, knocking out some pretty uh, relevant Pokemon. So I do like that. 60 damage, also a great attack for softening up Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max. And 160 base damage is nothing to scoff at. That being said, how are we accelerating energy? Onto Inteleon VMAX, is it going to be worth it to get a Frost Moth into play to put energy on the Inteleon that's two evolved Pokemon? Is there enough damage output there to make it worth it? Or is Lapras VMAX just the more powerful uh, Pokemon VMAX for water types to use? Inteleon VMAX does share that lightning weakness, which is a little bit tough since Picaram is still a deck that sees play. And of course, there is that new Bolton V, which comes out in this set. So we're going to be looking out for lightning types as well. I think Inteleon VMAX is a decent water card all in all, but my favorite of the VMAX Pokemon is Rillaboom VMAX as far as the starters go. I love lightning type Pokemon and I love Bigaram. You all know this, so I'm really excited about Bolton V. Bolton V has two great attacks. Its first one for one lightning energy, Electrify, allows you to search your deck for up to two lightning energy and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like, then shuffle your deck. It's like a full blitz light minus the damage, but also minus the hassle of having to get Tapu Koko Prism Star into play and all of that. If you're going second with Picaram, you can go for a turn one Electrify, and it gives you a way to be able to play Lightning decks without necessarily needing to rely on Picaram. So I do like that. Picaram only has 240 hit points. At this point, it is one of the weakest tag team Pokemon, Bolton V, a welcome addition to the cast. It's only worth two prizes and has a respectable 200 HP. Its second attack, Lightning Storm, for a lightning and a colorless does 10 plus 30 more damage for each lightning energy you have attached to your Pokemon in play. So these two attacks go together beautifully. You accelerate energy into play with Electrify, then maybe you can full blitz from there, and then you can lightning storm for huge numbers. You do need a lot of energy in play, but of course we've got Electro Power as well to help boost these numbers. I think that Bolton V is going to be a card that sees a lot of play with lightning type decks. There's even a Vikavolt in this set, which does more damage for the amount of lightning energy that there are in play. So I think that this is going to be a card that sees a lot of traction. It could get free retreat as well with Zeraora GX. There's just a lot of lightning support out there and Bolton V is going to be happy to inherit it. If there's one thing I know, if there's one thing I know about the Pokemon trading card game is that people love a spread deck. We've got Toxtricity, from VMAX Rising with the Poison Shout attack. For one lightning energy, this attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Don't apply weakness or resistance for bench Pokemon. This reminds me a lot of Flying Flip Tapu Koko, except instead of a double colorless attack cost, we have got a single lightning energy attack cost. So Poison Shout could be used pretty easily as early as the second turn of the game after you evolve up your Toxtricity. There's also a lot of snipe support in the format in the forms of Roxy's wheezing and coughing. So I could conceive that there might be some sort of spread deck available here and poisoning the active Pokemon is a nice little added bonus. Ultimately, I am concerned that the spread damage from Poison Shout is not necessarily high enough to be able to compete with the huge amount of hit points that Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max have, but I thought I mentioned him.
Do you like flipping coins? I love flipping coins. And so does Galarian Cursola. Its ability, Perish Body, reads if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, flip a coin. If heads, the attacking Pokemon is knocked out. It's the same ability as the fainting spell Gengar from Stormfront, and that Gengar saw a lot of play. Galarian Cursola being a stage one is even easier to get into play and is a great wall that can take bonus prizes. Now its attack is not that great. For a psychic in a colorless corner, only does 60 damage and the defending pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn a lot of decks are playing a high switch count in order to accommodate for jirachi and stellar wish so corner isn't really going to be trapping anything in the active that often now cursola does act as a formidable wall and can take bonus knockouts so that is very valuable and i think if cursola does see any play it's going to be in more of a hit and run style deck where cursola is the wall that you run to with a more formidable attacker Continuing on with the coin flip theme, Dragapult has a familiar ability. Infiltrator reads, if this Pokemon would be damaged by an attack, flip a coin. If heads prevent all damage done to this Pokemon, one of my favorite pet decks is Whimsicott GX, whose ability is essentially the same thing. Dragapult is a non-GX, meaning that it doesn't even have to worry about Power Plant or Mimikyu or anything like that, turning its ability off. It's got an attack as well for two Psychic Ghost Drive, does 120 damage, and you get to put three damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. So an amazing attack on a stage two with 150 HP. I love that 120 and 30 snipe. That is a great energy cost to damage output attack cost. That being said, this is a stage two Pokemon. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get into play. And if you're not too lucky on those coin flips, this thing is going to get knocked out turn after turn. So it's a little bit of a high roll concept, but if you're feeling lucky, maybe you'll give Dragapult a shot. It's so sad what they did to fighting type Pokemon. What a fall from grace. Y'all remember Buzzrock? Buzzrock ruled the format for like an entire year. Now we have Sandaconda V, who is a pretty underwhelming fighting type Pokemon. Fighting in the current state of the game is just not up to the same power level as Pokemon like Zacian V, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia any of the fire Pokemon that inherit the Welder engine. Santa Cana V has two attacks. His first attack for a fighting energy, Sand Crown does 30 damage, and you get to attach a fighting energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon, powering itself up for its second attack, Sand Breath. It does 220 damage, and you have to discard two energy from this Pokemon. Just apples to apples comparing a three energy attack from Zacian V which deals 230 damage and the only effect is that it can't attack next turn which can easily be remedied this guy has to find new ways to get energy back on itself after using sand breath unfortunately Sandaconda V I don't think is very playable Double V is a really cool Pokemon out of VMAX Rising. It's a colorless Pokemon, so it can be played in just about any kind of deck, which I really like. And there's a lot of different ways to accelerate energy onto it. It's got 210 HP, which is further boosted by its Soft Wool ability, which decreases damage done to this Pokemon by 30 damage, meaning that you would have to deal 240 damage to Double Wool in order to KO it in one hit and that means that we're going to survive an unboosted brave blade which is pretty nice revenge burst for three colorless energy does 120 damage plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent has taken so if they've taken four prizes you're going to be dealing 240 damage which is pretty respectable and then if they've taken five then you're going to be dealing 270 which is one of those magic numbers KOing most tag team pokemon i like that double v is splashable but i'm interested to see if it's going to make the cut over a lot of other colorless Pokemon, maybe like Megalopunny and Jigglypuff GX in future decks. There are a lot of really powerful trainer cards out of VMAX Rising, Water Bucket being one of them. It reads, search your deck for up to two water energy, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. In the grand scheme of things, it is simply just a worse Professor's Letter. Professor's Letter was an item card that got two of any type of basic energy and put them into your hand. But in the context of standard format, where we have no such search option, Viridian Forest being the closest thing, Water Bucket is a welcome addition to the kind of 
struggling Frostmoth archetype. Frostmoth was a hyped card coming out of the Sword and Shield base set. There are some powerful attackers that can take advantage of Frostmoth's energy acceleration, but the list for Frostmoth has not necessarily been cracked yet, and it hasn't been able to keep up with speedier threats like Zacian V or even the Welder decks. Water Bucket has a chance to change all of that. Getting two water energy out of the deck to the hand is perfect in combination with Frost Moth's Ice Dance ability, which can rain those water energy immediately onto your benched Pokemon. In combination with Viridian Forest, you can get many energy to your hand to put into play. Will Water Bucket be the card that really puts Frost Moth on the map? I'm certainly going to try and make it so. Burning Scarf is a new Pokemon tool for fire type Pokemon that automatically inflicts burn if the Pokemon it is attached to is damaged by an opponent's attack in the active position. Cards like this have seen play. We've seen Dragon Talon in some decks. We saw Rocky Helmet for a while, which saw some select play. Now this card is no spell tag, but it's pretty decent dealing a guaranteed 20 damage back to a Pokemon so long as they can be inflicted by burn and then potentially more if that burn sticks around it could see play in some fire type decks we get a few new supporters out of vmax rising as well sonia the aspiring pokemon professor being one of them this card reads very similarly to roseanne's research from back in the day it allows you to search your deck for up to two basic pokemon or up to two basic energy reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle your deck now in comparison, Pokemon Fan Club did see a lot of play, and that card just allowed you to get two basic Pokemon and put them into your hand. Sonya is explicitly better than Pokemon Fan Club, so I do think that this card will see some play. Skyla is back. Now, Skyla has been printed a number of times throughout the history of the Pokemon trading card game. It's a supporter card that allows you to search your deck for a trainer card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Skyla saw a lot of play during the black and white era when it was common practice to use Skyla on the first turn of the game to go get yourself a tropical beach, especially in setup decks. And then you could Skyla turn two for cards like Ultra Ball or Rare Candy to finish setting up your stage two line. In the X and Y, era Skyla did not see a lot of play and now here we are in the Sun and Moon Sword and Shield era cards like Volkner see a lot of play right now in lightning type decks it gets you an item card and a lightning type energy but Skyla can get you any trainer card so it can get you even another supporter if you wish and I think that Skyla's playability really hinges on whether or not the right item cards or stadium cards or trainer cards for that matter get printed for Skyla to take advantage of. For instance, if Tropical Beach was reprinted, Skyla would be a fantastic card to go search out Tropical Beach turn one and help set up stage two decks like it did during the black and white era. But so long as Tropical Beach is not legal in standard format, usually we're going to be relying on Zashi and V for that Intrepid Sword ability. Now you could Skyla for the Quick Ball to go get that, but I, I'm not sure that Skyla is necessarily going to be fulfilling that same niche that it used to in the black and white era but it's worth mentioning and the card does have potential it's just really about does there exist the cards for Skyla to take advantage of for it to be the most effective poor milo milo is just not all that great it allows you to discard up to two cards from your hand then draw twice as many cards as you discarded kind of reminds me of Sophocles a little bit, which you discarded two cards from your hand and could draw four. You get to discard up to two cards from your hand and draw twice as many as you discarded. So a little bit more flexibility than Sophocles, but Sophocles didn't really see that much play and I don't really expect Milo to either. Now, both of the stadium cards out of VMAX Rising are really good. Turf Field specifically, great for that grass box deck that we had talked about featuring Rillaboom VMAX. It allows each player during their turn to search their deck for a grass evolution Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into their hand. Then that player shuffles their deck. So great for getting out those Rillabooms from Sword and Shield and also for finding Rillaboom VMAXs, overall increasing the consistency of that grass box deck. 
Now, Training Court is an incredible stadium card. I think it's going to see a lot of play. It's like the complete inverse of Viridian Forest. And Viridian Forest sees a lot of success. And I think Training Court is going to have a similar function. It's a stadium that reads once during each player's turn. That player may choose a basic energy card from their discard pile, reveal it, and put it into their hand. It's like Energy Stadium from the Neo era, except minus the coin flip you just get an energy from your discard pile to your hand and that is very good mount coronet saw some play with metal type decks this is for any type of deck you could use it in your frost moth deck to help retrieve water energy for frost moth's ice dance ability you could use it in any kind of deck that could use getting energy back from the discard pile and getting energy back from the discard pile is a very popular thing to do Blacephalon from Unbroken Bonds, to name a few. There are just uh, a lot of different cards that I think can take advantage of this, and it's going to be a hot stadium for sure. Last but certainly not least, we have Twin Energy. It's like the long-lost cousin of Double Colorless Energy, just a little bit worse, but still a great card. It's a special energy that provides two colorless energy, but the added subtext that reads, if this card is attached to a Pokemon V or a Pokemon GX, this card provides one colorless energy instead. So it only works for Pokemon EX or non-Pokemon GX, non-Pokemon V. Basically, one prize Pokemon or Pokemon EX. So Night March has eight energy now. Hooray! And Lost March in standard format has access to a double colorless style energy again so that you can use cards like Not To or the Cottony in order to attack. Cottony hitting for that fairy typing could be a little bit scary for Arceus Dalgapalkia decks to deal with. And I think that there are going to be a lot of non GX decks that really enjoy this twin energy boost. And personally, I'm really glad that Pokemon decided to balance this card out and make it not work on Pokemon GX and Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max. So I think that this is a great card. It's going to see a lot of play. One of the most hyped cards out of this set for sure. Can it save Lost March as a deck? I'm not entirely convinced, but I'm certainly going to try. And that about does it for our V Max Rising video. Thank you all so much for watching. If I didn't cover a card that you were looking forward to from the Japanese set V Max Rising, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be doing a part two of this video covering all of the cards from Rebellious Clash. So we are going to be talking about that other half that is going to be making up part of our Rebel Clash set out May 1st. So if we, I didn't cover a card that's in that set, we're going to be getting to that later on in the next video. But let me know what you thought of the video. Make sure to like the video and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. Supporting Full Grip directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. It really makes a huge difference. Also, make sure to check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Tricky Gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. We have a great community built up there, and it's really a blast to be a part of. So thank you so much to everybody who has already given the Twitch channel a follow. We're almost at 10,000 followers over on Twitch. That's about it. Wraps up the video. Hopefully you all have a great day and stay safe out there. I'll catch you later on Twitch. Have a good one. Peace.